very much, and um, congratulations to our designers as well. I thought that was a great presentation. Um, it reminded me of my own experience at business school, where you're sent out to go and come up with a solution in an hour. You've got to put all the, all the, all the photographs down, down, you've got to get all the data, and you've got to come up with the ideas, and you've got to agree it. Uh, no mean feat, um, but great experience for uh, real life. Because very often you do have to figure your team. Teamwork is essential. Uh, so it's a really great experience that you get out of that kind of learning. Um, the other thing, I'm going to drop the mic. If you don't Can everyone hear me all right? Uh, I'm going to drop the mic because I, I have a, a shoulder that shakes. Um, the other thing that really struck me um, listening to them was that an essential part of business learning is about teamwork. You learn as much from the other people on your course as you do from your tutors and from your course. So who is on the course with you is absolutely essential. And one of the things that struck me about this course is their aim for diversity, their aim for inclusion. That's so important because if you're learning from other people, you don't want to learn from somebody who thinks exactly the same as you. You want to get that experience, and that diversity is essential. Um, I know I'm keeping you from your coffee, uh, and I'll try to be brief, uh, but I did want to bookend uh, this short talk uh, with reference back to the ambassador right at the beginning. Uh, he posed the question implicitly, what is education as well? Uh, and he, 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 he posed the answers, education needs a purpose, and education is to serve the future, and it gives meaning to the life. Uh, that's so true. But the British Council, we're committed to education, and we believe those two precepts absolutely. It does have certain implications. One implication is that for education to be relevant, it has to adapt. It has to be constantly changing. It is not set in stone. Um, Almost as soon as you have designed a curriculum, it is out of date. And what that means is that in order for education to be worthwhile, it has to have those connections with real life, with creativity, with actual business. It can't just happen over here in an ivory tower. Um, I remember when I first came to Nigeria, uh, one of the first things that I noticed, we've got this huge hall uh, at the entrance to the British Council. And one of the first things I noticed were these very forbidding signs saying, turn off your mobile phone. Mobile phone's forbidden. You can't switch your mobile phone on here. And so I asked our staff, why on earth does everybody have to switch off their mobile phones when they come into the British Council? What's, what's the point of that? And no one could really give me an answer <laughs> until I finally got someone who had been in the British Council for about 20 years. And he says, oh yes, that sign relates back to the time when we had a library in the British Council. This space was a library, so you had to be quiet. And your phones were about this big. Now, we had a library in the British Council for a good 15 years, but those signs have remained there. They've been updated and they've changed. And education curricula can be like that. They can have things in them that just stay. No one really remembers why, but they're, they're still there. So curriculum to be relevant. Have to, have to change, uh, they have to adapt. Um, take you back to Jean-Claude, uh, Jean-Pierre's presentation. Remember those three men walking along the riverbank, that beautiful site, having the idea uh, for this business school. At about the same time, in fact, probably about the same year, there was somebody who came to Nigeria uh, from the British Council and had this idea of setting up the British Council in Nigeria. So 75 years ago, this very month, we set up our first office uh, here in Nigeria. Now, just think about the vision that is required for those, those guys, uh, Henley, the guy who came out uh, from, from London to set up the British Council here. War was still raging at that time. The D-Day landing happened at the same, the same week that we opened up our first office here. You have to have that vision. We hadn't yet won the war in Europe, but we were still thinking, what's Africa going to be like? We need to be involved with Africa. We need to have those people-to-people uh, -people, uh, links and interactions. 
So at that time, at quite dark hour in Europe's history and the UK's history, people were already thinking what's going to happen in the future. So although it can be bad, can seem bad sometimes, although the traffic problems might be enormous, think ahead, think to what it could be, think to what that can change. For the British Council, there's been a number of changes. Think back to 1944, we didn't have so much technology, uh, the way we worked was completely different, but there have been a number of constants that we have had throughout that time. Uh, one of the constants, thank you, one of the constants is what we focus on. Uh, what we focus on is education. Education in its very broadest sense. So not just schools and universities, sure those as well, but also professional development, thinking about lifelong learning, practical education, how do you get it, internships, all of that sort of thing, and training. Uh, and making sure that there is a link between education and real life, going back to that purpose of education. So that was one thing that we have focused on throughout those 75 years. The other thing that we focused on is arts and creativity. All through our, our life in uh, Nigeria, that has been one of our mainstays. The other thing that's been constant is how we do it. We are not a donor organization, so we don't design uh, beautiful donor projects and say, okay, this is what's going to benefit Nigeria. We're about mutuality. We think that if Nigeria benefits from what we do, so should the UK. And the reason why that is so important is because it inspires creativity. Mutuality leads to ideas and the implementation ideas. If you take away that mutuality, you have something that's relatively static. So that brings me to the um, Nigeria Creative Enterprise Support Program. I'm sorry to stumble over it. We just call it the NICE program. Um, the NICE program, uh, of course, that's led to a lot of jokes, but it's, it's a short way of, of talking about it. And it's a nice example uh, of what I've been talking about. Um, it's got education elements. It's got the creativity elements. It's got that mutual benefit for both the UK and Nigeria. And also, critically, it's about increasing opportunities. Um, a speaker earlier, uh, Uzondo Uba, mentioned abilities are equally given, opportunities are not. Abilities are equally given, opportunities are not. That is so true. And also, such a waste. If you don't have inclusion, it's not ju just morally reprehensible, it's also economically reprehensible. You're not using your best resources if ability does not have access to opportunity. So with that in mind, this is what... I can get it to go. Okay, good. Okay. So what's it all about? The NICE program, it's not funded by the British Council, it's funded by the Foreign Office. Uh, we're a separate organization from the, F the FCO. Um, that means we're not part of the government in the UK, we're not representative of the government of the day. We're a state organization separate from the FCO. But the FCO is a much richer organization than we are, and so tends to fund programs like this. So it's funded by the FCO, but we actually implement it. Its aim was to stimulate uh, UK and Nigerian linkages, particularly in film and fashion. Why film and fashion? Because those were areas that were where we identified some real possibilities in Nigeria and some real possibilities in the UK, but there weren't all that many existing links. So that was our area of focus. And the way we did it was by creating individuals uh, and individual uh, and institutions opportunities to share, to learn, to collaborate, and uh, to get things going. And the result of that was more professional uh, opportunities and partners. And I have to say, this has really been achieved, much more than we were expecting. A lot of the linkages that we established through the program are still going, a lot of really exciting things uh, coming from it. So, um, what came out of it? Well, first of all, improved skills for all of the people who were involved uh, with the program, uh, and, and that's a, a kind of given. 
But also, um, much more importantly, was this collaboration element. So in Nigeria, um, access to the UK, our institutions, universities, and colleges and schools, key partners, and in the UK, better knowledge of what's happening in Nigeria and the exciting creativity uh, that exists here. Jane would be delighted to see the number of women that we've got here. It wasn't, wasn't um, in, intended, uh, but again, with an exclusive dimension, what we're looking to do is to make sure that we, are, we have a great a variety as possible. Uh, and you can see that um, our Deputy High Commissioner is there as well. So, just the key elements. So that's the overall program. And then um, Henley and Afrinoli uh, were a, a key part of taking forward the film uh, element of that. So working together, they had uh, 50 young entrepreneurs work together over the course of three months. Uh, we gave grants to those who were successful. Uh, it says five entrepreneurs received grants. Actually, because they were so good, uh, we had to up that number, and it was set. Um, I won't read all of this stuff, but this, these are the testimonials. These are what people said at the end of the program. Um, overall, really, really successful uh, from our point of view in the British Council. Um, we're quite open about programs that don't succeed. Sometimes programs fail, and it's all part of our learning process. But sometimes programs are very successful. And we mark this one down as something that was very successful. We had the right idea, it worked well. We had, without flattering too much, we had the right partners, uh, and it really got things going. Um, another thing to say is that um, our regional director, who's um, of Nigerian heritage, uh, he's based in uh, Kenya at the moment. He came to Nigeria last week, and he visited Afrinoli. Uh, and when he was talking to the people at Afrinoli, he was asking about this program, and somebody said, it was great. It's enabled me to make money. And you know, for the British Council, sometimes we kind of, you know, we're a bit shy about money. But he loved it. He loved the fact that we were enabling people to make money because that's how you make <coughs> industries sustainable. Uh, I'd also just like to point out this one that's down here. I've gained insights as to how to balance creativity with business and have a better understanding of the regulatory system. So, you know. That is one of the key elements, is making sure that creative element that I was talking about earlier also goes with education. We don't see them as sitting separately in British Council, we see them as interwoven, and that's how you get success. You might recognize a couple of those people. So besides the creative entrepreneurs who were primarily mentored face to face, uh, there was also an opportunity to reach a lot more people through the film. So, uh, there was a kind of multiplier effect on the program. So all in all, it was just it was a it was a great success. Uh, we're really pleased uh, with the way it went. Um, and I'd just like to end by reflecting a couple of the comments that I've heard um, earlier today. Um, Bioedemy, uh, uh, sorry for getting your name wrong. Um, Adekambi mm -hmm. said, "We are sitting on a huge opportunity." In Nigeria. And the ambassador uh, uh, said earlier, Nigeria is a loon idea. We agree. We think that there is great opportunity in Nigeria. It's one of the most important uh, countries for us in the British Council. And the reason for that is because of the possibilities um, that, are, that will come up uh, in the future. Marrying creativity and innovation, technology and education. Uh, so this is a great opportunity of that, and I think that the program on offer will reflect that as well. Thank you very much.